Welcome to a new video by OceanLeaf and today we're going to talk about device control in Intune. So that's a topic that often gets attention but um, from my perspective these uh, concepts are quite a bit complex to explain. This is also why I wrote a blog post back in the days and now I want to make a video to give you a better interpretation and to read the blog post better also to give you some real world examples here. So let's directly jump into it. I will orientate also here in this video for the blog post and um, feel free to open it. It's linked in the description down below. So about device control, what is it even? Basically, it is all about controlling the access to devices. So for example, USB sticks for storage, but also other devices such as uh, peripherals and other things. Now it's important to mention the background why we should control the access to, to peripherals. Um, this is because of a security background, of course, because an attacker could store a malicious code on these devices. We also want to go for a data protection, so we don't have any confidential files leaked on, on those uh, removable uh, storage media. And also inventory compliance, so that we only allow peripherals that we have in our inventory and we control and we have a, a good compliance on it. But keep in mind always that in terms of data protection, um, the Azure, Inf Azure Information Protection should be your goal. So implementing the security or basically data protection on file level and not with such a control. This is just to support it. So if you're interested in more of the security background, there's a really good blog post by Michael Schneider, uh, also linked here, but uh, simply put, we have some security backgrounds in terms of direct memory access. So for example, if any process wants to access your memory without Windows knowing of it. And we have also some side channel attacks knowing a sniffing of TPM uh, keys. And we have some other, um, most of the time we also know examples from social engineering. So um, <laughs> distribute some USB sticks and see who plugs it in. And then, yeah, <laughs> we also have some tests. So these are like the backgrounds. Now coming to the concept which is described here, personally I see three use cases. One of them is to block specific hardware classes. So let's say for example we don't want any Windows portable devices plugged in or connected to our uh, PCs, Windows PCs. We may also want to control uh, removable storage in general. So that means we are, we are most likely also going to block a CD-ROM or other device types. And then with device control in the end, we have an allow or block list for certain devices. Also here, keep in mind that this is really like the access to the device. We're not going to control what's happening on the device. Um, that's where you should enable BitLocker to configure read-only access, for example, to removable storage media. Now coming to the guide. First of all, how would you identify devices? That's pretty simple, just connect it to a PC and then you can open Device Manager and all the devices get enumerated there. So here I've put an example for a USB stick and here on the details pane, you can search for different properties. These are used to easily or unique, uniquely identify devices. For this example, I've used hardware IDs but there are also others uh, like, for example, vendor IDs, if you want to filter for a specific vendor and so on. Just click through the attributes and see it. So from my experience, you can completely block some set of classes except for maybe smart card reader. That's a hot one. Um, but um, to be honest, who uses these classes today anymore? Um, it's maybe a good idea to block them completely because uh, maybe uh, sometime an attack could happen through some channels of there. If you want to get an overview of all setup classes, Microsoft has put together a great list. So about device categories and, and um, class values, that's pretty simple uh, structure. So for example, um, if you want to have a look at the biometric devices, these always come at this class um, GUID and it's pretty, pretty simple to identify them and also use that later in the Intune policy, which we're now going to take a look at um, when it comes to the real life demo. So let's get into it. Now in Intune, we are going to navigate to endpoint security and here to attack surface reduction. 
Now keep in mind that these settings can also be configured through classic config profiles and settings catalog, but I would advise you to use uh, the policies here found in the tech surface reduction, because that's the place where endpoint security belongs to. Now I've prepared mainly three policies which we are going to take a look at now. Uh, the first of them is just to allow all storage. Uh, second one is to block all storage. And the third one is to completely block all devices. But how would you create such a policy? Just click here, create policy, pretty simple, Windows 10 and later, and that's always here stored under device control. Now I've already made that, and we're now going to take a look at the allow all storage policy. Here within the config settings, there's a pretty simple setting apply layered order of evaluation. I would recommend to always enable that just that there's a, a, a defined um, process how devices are going to be um, evaluated after you apply control. So that's described within that info pane. Now, how do we uh, block or sorry, how do we allow all storage, um, but block some device classes which are not used, which I referenced in the blog post. That's with the policy of prevent installation of devices using drivers that match these setup classes, enable that one. And then we can put here in the class GUIDs, um, which the classes are prevented from. So I've orientated here for the, um, for the usual classes that are not so commonly used, but you could also use some others as described here from the Microsoft Docs page. Can also choose if the if the policy applies to um, devices which are already installed. Usually, I would recommend that. And then you have some other settings which I do not configure here, except for the Defender um, removable drive scanning and the dark memory access. I've orientated here to the Microsoft Security Configuration Framework, so that's like the baseline security policies. Microsoft recommends to configure this in an enterprise environment. So I'm going to do that too. Now that's basically everything which is in this policy. If you apply that to a group, so assign it, um, users could still plug in USB devices or storage devices and store their data on, but this uh, unused uh, classes would not be uh, used anymore or could not use, be used anymore. Now taking a look at the policy where I want to block all storage, meaning that users assigned into that group cannot store data um, to devices they plug in. So how did I do that? It's also pretty simple. Apply the same base um, settings, which I showed before from the baseline. But here you can see we have some more prevented classes. And what I did here is added classes such as the Windows portable devices, which is, for example, if you plug in a device such as an iPhone or other um, a camera or so, uh, which then presents um, storage to the end user. Also some classic USB sticks and other ones. Just go through the list here. That's really the best thing you can do to really find all um, device classes which could theoretically store storage. Now, if you assign that one, as said, no access to removable storage. Third one is to completely block all devices. Now, in reality, this is not a recommended policy. At least I could not see a direct use case, except for maybe kiosk PCs, that would be one. But what I have done here is really to uh, prevent the installation of um, of all removable devices, so no classes inserted here. It's really the policy that completely blocks all the devices. Now that would mean if you plug in a camera or a mouse or other um, devices, they would not work. So <laughs> test it out, get a look of, of it, but that's like really a hard lined policy. Now, last but not least, you see a little um, screen here called reusable settings. That's a thing in Intune that gets more and more attention because here we can add some reusable settings and you can use them in multiple policies. That's a good concept if you have multiple policies and don't want to enter the same classes uh, every time. So you just um, add them once and if you update them, 
they also get updated within all the policies. So here I have registered a USB device based on the friendly name and some other attributes. You can go here by yourself. Um, in reality or in the field, I would recommend you to add the vendor ID, product ID. That's generally recommended if you want to block or allow um, one manufacturer of devices or storage or USB sticks, like in this example, and then just um, save it once here. Then afterwards, you can use that in a policy. Also, same type, if you scroll down to the device control setting, you can add here a list of that one. So for this example, I've added an entry with an included ID. That's always the reuse reusable setting. So um, all of my uh, USB devices that match this um, configured settings here will be allowed um, with no notifications. And um, we have some access masks here. You could also limit that to um, specific SIDs and computer SIDs if you want that, but <laughs> that makes the whole thing uh, quite a bit um, complex. So um, start easy and then get complicated and more into the security. That's my recommendation. So what does this policy mean or how does it work? I've also added here all storage classes, but I've set here for the allow list. I want to only let my USB devices work, which are defined in the reusable settings policy and none of the other because I completely block the class here. But this is like an exclusion or stands uh, over the setup prevention. So just add it here like an exclusion list. That's in the end how it works. Now for the security folks, there's a pretty good official documentation on Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and device control. I will also link that down in the description. This of course only applies to customer with the necessary license plan. So make that one sure. Then we have some good documentation how to deal with device control in terms of uh, security, especially with a Defender in place. So great documentation on here. I will skip that one. But one I, what I wanted to highlight are these advanced hunting queries you can find here because they can give you some insights into your environment and how device uh, devices, removable devices are used, and also especially media. So here you see the queries, try them out in advanced hunting and see what's going on in your environment. So that's definitely a good input for the security folks. All right, so that's it with the video. I hope you could um, learn something and let me know how device control runs in your environment. Also, please leave me a like and subscription for the content and YouTube channel. And of course, everything is linked down in the description. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.